Firstly, I would like to thank uh, Geoscience BC for supporting this project. It has not uh, only been science here, I learned also a lot about accountancy and uh, other uh, maybe um, soft skills throughout this stage. Um, um, we put this project together with Thomas Bisik and Peter Kowalczyk, and um, it was the main idea was mainly to generate a new interpretation for the quest area. So, probably most of us are aware where the quest area is. It's centered at Prince George, and it uh, covers uh, rocks from the Cache Creek terrain, uh, Questnell terrain mainly, and to the east, um, Slide Mountain, and uh, rocks from the western margin of ancient North America. We interpret this area plus a buffer of about 20 kilometers around it, so it was a little bit broader than the original quest uh, survey. So I'm going to walk you through an introduction, and then we're going to go through different layers of interpretation, um, uh, a brief uh, chat on geological and structural interpretation of those lineaments, and then finally um, some, uh, some main uh, constraints on the exploration patterns. So this interpretation provides a fresh look at the structural styles, architecture, and bedrock geology of the area. Um, our main aim is uh, that this result can be used as a base layer for exploration and for targeting. So in a way, this project is a, is a first step. And, um, and where I've, we finished, uh, someone else will continue, uh, hopefully, um, and follow those, uh, those steps. We mainly use uh, Geoscience BC uh, gravity grids and uh, in combination with uh, NRCAN regional reduced to the pole magnetic data. This data was pro processed by Peter. Uh, we did a series of uh, transformations and filters and mainly we use our continued residual filters in order to suppress uh, um, signals uh, and signatures which were coming at different depth uh, slices. On top of that, we use a series of standard high and low pass filters. So that's the, that's the area that you can see the, that, that's the original in red track, uh, um, um, quest area, sorry, and a 20 kilometer buffer around it. And you can see that mainly, uh, most of the area is covered by drift, uh, and on top of that, it's covered by uh, tertiary basalts, uh, broadly spread. So, and the, mainly the, the, the porphyry-related occurrences occur north and south of Prince George, and they just vanish under the sediments. So our idea is to construct a new map which would guide us into that area of, uh, um, of um, unknown territory. So the project consists on a series of uh, deliverables, products. These were, Janice just told me that they were uploaded uh, to the internet and you can now download them. Um, firstly, it consists of a ready-to-print poster in PDF format, which is uh, outside there in the, in the poster room. And then it consists of two ArcGIS map packages. Uh, this comes as a map package and also as shapefiles. The principal one is, uh, is, is the map, the interpretation map, um, at a 400,000 scale, which is uh, this here. And uh, a more elaborated version of that, uh, which consists of the series of layers of interpretation and analysis. Uh, as well, you can download all the series of um, filters and transformations and done performed by Peter. Uh, and then each of those maps uh, are accompanied by uh, a presentation um, and also by meta data. Uh, so that's how the poster looks like. So in the center there, you have the main interpretation map. To the left, um, the legend associated to that interpretation map. And this some of the principal filters of, uh, and, and, and grids of gravity and, and uh, magnetic data. So in a way, it's set up in a very similar way to the original uh, interpretation. 
than a few years ago. So the interpretation layers consist of aromagnetic lineaments. So the classic aromagnetic lineaments that normally or most commonly uh, magnetite destructive lineaments, which bound uh, domains of different uh, intensity and frequency. Then another layer of uh, uh, anomaly axes. These are the axes of elongated uh, elliptical shape plan view anomalies, mag anomalies. And, um, <clears throat> and then a series of minor magnetic domains which we, we use to extract and to compare, to correlate to the geological maps from the BCGS. So the main, uh, the main data used for interpretation was the MAC data, uh, mainly because of the resolution that we could, uh, we could get from there. And we use that interpretation and uh, feed that interpretation with the gravity data. <clears throat> so I'll walk you through the different layers of interpretation and analysis. So to the left, you have, uh, there's an upward residual, upward, upward continued residual from um, which was one of the of the MAC data, which was one of the mainly uh, one of the principally used products. Um, and the idea of these different levels of upper continuation was to try to enhance signals which were coming at from different levels uh, or depth um, levels. In this case, um, we were trying to get rid partially of the signals coming from, well, the till, uh, the sediments, and these uh, tertiary basalts. Uh, so this was pretty useful, and this was a, a technique which I learned um, from uh, my time at MDIU, uh, working with the Fathom guys as well. And to the right, the airborne gravity data, which we used to feed that interpretation. Uh, so the first stage, on, on, uh, the first stage of mapping uh, was uh, mapping individual anomalies. So most of these uh, smaller mag anomalies uh, do have an elliptical shape in plan view, and we trace those long axes of those elliptical shape anomalies. And we classify them uh, by their intensity using the RTP mag. And so we created different orders, or different, uh, uh, we could already uh, classify them in two different orders. And obviously, on top of that, we use those lineaments and we um, classify them by azimuth, by their spatial distribution or density distribution, by their intensity and by their frequency. Here you can see one of those uh, classifications. Uh, the, this, this map shows an azimuth, uh, just a very simple azimuth exercise, and you can see already that the north-northwest north, trans origin parallel uh, lineaments uh, are the most common ones. Locally you can see those in the north-south trending ones in red and uh, some uh, origin perpendicular, uh, smaller anomalies trending in northeast orientation. Hmm. So, the next stage in interpretation uh, was uh, the tracing, the manual tracing of aromagnetic lineaments. These are mainly mag destructive lineaments which bound magnetic anomalies, major magnetic domains, and uh, major magnetic anomalies. So these were um, evaluated across the different data layers uh, and, and so to classify them into either domain major, uh, which would bound lineaments which would bound major domains, domain minor, lineaments which would bound minor magnetic domains. This is all very qualitative. And then uh, lineaments would, would um, be traced within magnetic, major magnetic domains. And then again, a similar exercise. Uh, we, we classify them um, by azimuth, spatial distribution, uh, or density, uh, frequency, and intensity uh, respond. And uh, then again, here you can see similar characteristics. Already some, some, um, some general fabric in this north-northwest trend, origin parallel in black, north-south trending major lineaments, which cut previous uh, North northwest trending ones, and then locally, this northeast trending structures. So this is the building up of the of the map, and uh, the one of the main one of the principal components of it is to try to break apart that grid into different domains. 
Um, so uh, then again, this is all about the interpreter, so uh, nothing is done uh, automatically. I trace manually those different domains, looking in specifically at areas which have uh, similar frequency and similar intensity in the MAC data, and then I populate those different polygons with uh, data extracted from those different data layers. I could populate those polygons by the mean uh, intensity from the RTP, for instance, or the standard deviation of the gravity grid. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the case of, uh, of, of those uh, domains populated by um, horizontal grading magnitude uh, signals. Uh, and we can see already that the, this, this, this red domain here at Mount, north of Mount Milligan, or just west of Mount Milligan, and the one at Mount Poly and Wuchum have a, quite a similarity. And east of that, there's a series of domains which are um, low frequency uh, domains, um, which are drastically different to what we see further to the west. Hmm? So the next stage of interpretation is to spatially um, correlate these different domains and upon the rocks also that they, are, they, they cover. Uh, mainly the eastern set of domains cover rocks uh, of the ancient North American margin. The central domains um, cover rocks of uh, Quenelle, mainly, and, uh, and these are where we are most interested in. We already see um, a long strike continuation of those uh, uh, Mount Milligan and Mount Poly Woodman domains going into the till be beneath the sediments. And for the west, uh, we got two, mainly two types of uh, domains which are covering uh, Cache Creek rocks and also Nanchago Basin uh, rocks, which was Craig was talking about uh, previously. So the idea is to, we, we got the lineaments and now we'll try to uh, just in a very broad way uh, with a very little, uh, not spending too much time in the field, but still going to first step on uh, geological and structural interpretation of those lineaments and domains. So to the left, you can see uh, those, the different magnetic domains populated by different characteristics of the, uh, extracted from the grids. And then in black, I extracted um, high intensity magnetic uh, units. Mm -hmm. This, uh, in this case, over greater or equal than 350 nanotesla, mm -hmm. which was, was basically was working better for me. And, um, and w using that, I chopped, I clipped the BCGS geology in order to get an idea of where those sources are coming from. And in most cases, they correspond to um, this um, Triassic basalts, uh, Nicola group mainly for here to the south, and here in the northern part to those Jurassic intrusive, and as well to those uh, basalts. <clears throat> so, again, this is the. Uh, so we took that geology and we tidy up things in a different in a, in a different way, and to get to understand which could be our possible sources of mag. Uh, anomalies, um, so we created this chronostratigraphic chart, which is also included in the poster, and we went to the field, which was critical to, uh, in order to understand what these lineaments could represent uh, if they would be real uh, fault and fracture arrays. So we went mainly, we did a transect across Prince George, um, and this, this example is, uh, is of the Eaglet uh, Lake area. It's about 40 kilometers east of Prince George. And what we saw there, there are very nice outcrops there, we saw it's mainly a series of uh, um, dikes in, uh, trending in northwest orientation, uh, sitting in tensional fractures, dilational fractures, and reactivated in a dextral way, as you can see here in, uh, in a dextral sense, as you can see here in this silicon sites and silicon fibers uh, on that plane. And then we also saw, uh, uh, well, a, a sub-perpendicular trend in northeast orientation, uh, hosting a series of quartz veins and uh, uh, tensional uh, joint uh, patterns. So that's the interpretation of the area. Here to the top, uh, Right, you see the uh, DEM data, which we also integrated into this study. 
um, and you can see a, a series of, uh, of Eocene and Eocene and uh, Cretaceous intrusives sitting uh, across this Eagle Lake area, and, but they correspond to a broader signal, magnetic signal, which is sitting just beneath them. So those intrusives are following locally those northeast trending orientations related to those tensional and extensional fault systems, but in a broader sense, they follow the origin parallel structures mainly um, dextral steric slip and, um, and reverse and thrust uh, faults. <coughs> so we use a series of uh, uh, classic geology or structural geology um, guides to interpret the sense of uh, or the, or this, or the, or the structural types of, this, uh, of these lineaments. For instance, things like bow, the classic bow and arrow shaped thrusts yeah, which indicate the sense of transport. Uh, like in this case here, we commonly use, um, we, 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 we used as a, as a, as a common rule, um, MAGA normally sitting in hanging walls of reverse faults. And then uh, what we came up is with something like this. It's preliminary, but still it's, it's, it's the first step. Nor these trending structures, mainly extensional faults, normal faults, north northwest trending structures, mainly reverse and thrust faults, and north south trending structures, mainly uh, strike slip dextral uh, fault systems. So this is this is one of the key outcomes, and 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 this is where we stop with interpretation somehow. Um, so we got to the point that we built the map. And from uh, from this stage forward, then it's uh, it's 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 meant to be a product for the industry to use as a guide for exploration. So I would say that the, one of the main outcomes of this of this uh, work has been the mapping uh, of that central domain, which hosts most of the porphyry type occurrences, um, and we can. Now we, we have a map which, continue, which um, gives a continuation along strike and puts together that Mount Milligan area with a Mount uh, Poly Wood Gym area. Hmm? So that, that belt is sitting in Quenelle terrain and uh, we can now trace it up uh, to, to further um, mapping. So both areas uh, south and north um, are uh, distinctly uh, um, um, characterized by the by by this uh, Triassic uh, volcanics, and uh, and they don't make things easier because they are highly magnetic in, ma in many cases. But what we see this is a this is a work done by by uh, Santiago Aga at MDIU. And we see that uh, at Mount Milligan mainly. Uh, we got a, a mineral section which is a bit younger than the Mount Poly area, and also rocks are uh, less uh, with uh, have uh, less magnetic susceptibility than the Mount Poly area. So, to the north, we can see that's a close-up to the north at f one to five hundred thousand scale Mount Milling area. We see a series of in yellow. You see the the porphyry type occurrences uh, as. Uh, the geological survey has classified, uh, and we see a series of sort of isolated high mag anomalies. Hmm? We don't really see a belt of anomalies uh, sitting in this um, uh, highly changing uh, background. Yeah? Uh, whether in the Mount Poly Woodrum area, we can already see a belt following along where Mount Poly is sitting, trending to the southwest and northwest. Hmm? So I think we were quite, uh, uh, this 350 nanotesla uh, extraction of uh, data from the magnetic grid was quite successful at the Mount Milligan area. We can already trace sort of autom in, a, in an automatic way, extracting that data, uh, the main, main anomalies in that area. And then we can populate those different polygons by gravity, um, first vertical derivative signal, and, uh, and so on. So we can use those different filters to populate those uh, local anomalies uh, in order then to 
combine that with geochem and IP or, um, or other geophysical service with the goal of targeting hmm? and cl classification and then targeting. So, but in the Mount Poly area, some things are a little bit more complex because the background mag is, is quite high and we cannot, it's difficult to distinguish between the, those, um, those anomalous uh, spots. Hmm? So it requires a bit more work. That's a, that's, that's a, that's a zoom in to the same, the same areas. So, Mount Milligan is sitting, this, Mount Milligan is sitting along the, those, that uh, gradient zone, that border zone, edge zone of that anomaly. And there's a series of other anomalies uh, of, of quite similar character in that same major domain. Hmm? So that major domain, which is already good, uh, encounters a series of other anomalies, especially that one, for instance, is quite similar to the Mount Milligan one. So I would say this is the first step, and what we need now is for, for exploration people as to, well, in a way, populate that, those signals or those polygons with other data sets, integrate, integrate and integrate more data sets in, uh, and classify. Uh, so in order to tell apart which, are they, which could be interesting or which are not. And in the case of Mount Poly, well, the sim similar methodology, but in this case, we see this belt which runs through Mount Poly. And that's interesting because a long strike, you can already see that Mount Poly is sitting there in that anomaly and you can see a series of other anomalies, a line uh, sitting over on the hanging wall of that thrust hmm, in northwest orientation. So there's no real conclusions to this, um, to this uh, project. Uh, it's, it's, it's meant to be a map which would guide others and keep on working on, what, uh, on, the, on, on the great data that we have uh, available. And, um, and obviously integrate geology and geophysics as much as possible. Thank you very much. <laughs>